Welcome. Today we're talking about platies. All we talk about is freshwater fish, so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. Platies are one of my absolute favorite fish, especially for beginners. That being said, I've been in the hobby a long time, and even I still keep platies. I, my favorite right now is a high fin, so it's got big fins, uh, sunset variatus platy. And so kind of a yellowy orange color with these big fins. Very beautiful, great fish. Uh, what I love about them is that they're so adaptable. What I mean by that is kind of pH, wide scale, 6.8 to 8.5. Like that's a huge range. That's most people in the world can keep that fish, right? And when it comes to temperature, kind of the same thing. Like, well, 70, 72 to 82. Like that's a huge range in that tropical zone, uh, whether you're trying to keep them with rams or whether you're trying to keep them with uh, white clouds, they can kind of play the gamut. They also uh, interact with plants well. That's another bonus. They're live bearers. So what does that mean? That means they give birth to live fish. Uh, they just The female carries around the babies, and then one day they come out. Now, you might want to do a little bit of uh, preventative maintenance there and make sure you've got live plants or at least a lot of cover in the tank with fake plants. Make sure that the intake of your... Uh, filter, if you're not using a sponge filter, is covered up. Uh, you could use pantyhose, you could use a net. Uh, we recommend like a pre-filter sponge, works really well. So that way the babies don't get sucked up in there. And then, you know, when it comes to water hardness, and there's some other parameters here, but water hardness, they prefer harder water, but they still do well in soft water. So my recommendation is get a little bit of crushed coral in there or a little bit of like a wonder shell or equilibrium, something to add some calcium if you don't already have water hardness from your local tap water. Now the great part is you can keep them as a solo fish, you can keep them as a group, you can breed them, you can do all kinds of stuff and there's a million different colors. There's red ones, there's blue ones, there's yellow ones or orange, yellow and orange the way I keep. There's uh, like coral blue platies, there's ninja platies, there's plume tail platies where the tail comes out very long, there's high fin, there's short fin, there's balloon platies. Uh, so there's all the varieties to keep. The good news is all of them can be kept together and they all have the same care requirements. So you basically get to point and shoot and go, oh, I like that one, I like this one, I like that one. My only recommendation is you try and keep it so you have two females for every male that you have, right? So if you're gonna keep six, get two males, four girls. Yes, they're gonna breed. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Uh, but that ratio keeps the males they're going to try and breed the females all the time, and because there's more females, that doesn't stress them out. If you get just one boy and one girl, he's going to pester her nonstop, and that can lead to a very stressful situation. So that would be my recommendation. You could go with a group of all girls, and eventually they're probably already going to be pregnant when you buy them at the store, and you'll probably get some males growing up in the tank, and that's fine too. Uh, when it comes to sexing them, the males have a uh, reproductive organ called a gonopodium. It looks like a little stick-like... Uh, thing that is used to impregnate the female, where the female on their anal fin will have a kind of a V normal shaped fin that you'd think like, oh yeah, that's the bottom fin on a fish. Uh, and that's the way you can sex them. Most pet stores should be able to tell male and female for you, not by color or anything like that, but very easy. If not, give yourself a little Google uh, or YouTube search and go, oh, that's how you do it. I watched the video. I'm now an expert uh, and then you can go in informed and maybe even teach the pet store employees something. But let's say you get them home, you've got this great planted tank, you've got filters going, you've got other fish in there because we like to have lots of different types of fish. They're eventually going to give birth. And they give birth about every 30 days or so. And you might only go, well, they only had one baby. Well, they probably had 30 or 40 babies, but they got eaten by other fish. Maybe you had a frog, maybe you had a cichlid in there, maybe you didn't have the filter covered. Uh, but you might raise one up, and that'll be very fun. You get the kids involved, you get the family involved. It'll be great. It'll get a name, and that'll happen every month or two. Now, if you really don't have other fish in there that would be predators, you feed the fish very, very well, and your intake is covered and all that kind of stuff, you might go, oh, we are making tons of babies. When you start getting lots and lots of big population, that becomes more and more mouths to feed. So if you keep putting more and more and more food in there, you're going to have to change water all the time. Now, if you just always put the same amount of food in there, no matter what, and there's a lot of babies, well, there's not enough food to go around, and so other fish will eat them. And that's what nature does, is basically go, well, there's not enough food, big fish eat small fish, now big fish is fed, great. 
and at some point in nature, there'd be more food and more would survive. Same thing, if you decide, I don't wanna take care of a bunch of babies during Christmas, that's fine, but now it's March, and you go, ooh, I would like to raise a spawn. I'm gonna feed more, and I'm gonna change more water. Uh, that would work out just fine. You could unload extra ones at the pet store or something like that, but in general, Think of all the good problems you're having, like, oh, they're making more, they look colorful, they cohabitate, they live with my live plants. Like, these are all wonderful things, and that's what makes platys such a great fish to own. And I recommend, if you've never done, done platys, kind of seriously, make a platy tank. Really enjoy it, and I think you'd be hard-pressed to not go, yeah, you know what? Platys, there's a reason they're very uh, popular in every store, because people have success and they really love them. You get that three to four inch fish that is full of color and relatively laid back and not as aggressive as say a sword tail or something like that. So check out our other guides.